Hey guys, and welcome back to how to make elements from household materials. Today's element is going to be palladium. Now, after I released that video on my dismantling a CPU, um, it seems that you guys would like to see me extract palladium off these circuit boards with these monolithic ceramic capacitors. So, I have a couple, I have two motherboards here, and then lots of circuit boards underneath from different various co computer components. But the motherboards, of course, are going to have a fair amount of uh, palladium on them. So here, I'll just rest this on my lap here, and you can see any of these teeny little capacitors there are all going to be filled with palladium. Now you can tell because they'll be the number C, and then some other letters or numbers or something, and that's going to make mean that it's a capacitor. So we're just going to scrape off all of these with a very fine screwdriver or something and collect them. I'll be back when that's done with every single one of these boards. Okay, so from all those circuit boards, you can see we got a relative amount of monolithic ceramic capacitors, but not a huge amount. So, I went to my school, and they have this scrap electronic recycling spot, so I asked them if I could use those boards. So I went through, and uh, I got a bunch of different boards, and some of them have monolithic ceramic capacitors on them. Um, and the ones that had them on them, I just took, so I'm going to process those. Um, I just wanted to show you how much I got from the boards that I first started with, and then we'll see how much I get off of these boards. So I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so I processed the rest of those, and this is our final yield of chips. So it doesn't look like a whole lot, but it's actually 10 grams of uh, monolithic ceramic capacitors. Now, just make sure that you only got the light tan to brown ones. Um, anything that's like gray or anything that's not a monolithic. Um, I did find some that were gray on there that said that they were capacitors. But they're not monolithic ceramic capacitors because they're identified by their brownish to tan color. So anyhow, you can see there were some quite large ones in there as well as some really teeny ones. But basically what we're going to do is dissolve off all of the nickel in some hydrochloric acid. Now keep in mind that hydrochloric acid when, dissol when dissolving nickel creates nickel 2 chloride, which is actually carcinogenic. So be very careful while you're doing this and don't ingest or... Um, inhale any of the uh, nickel 2 chloride. I highly suggest that you do not boil down your solution of hydrochloric acid and nickel 2 chloride afterwards as the pure nickel 2 chloride salts would not be nice to deal with due to their cancer causing abilities. Anyhow, other than that we're just going to add in some hydrochloric acid and uh, put these in a separate jar too and wait probably about half a week and half week to a week and that'll give us a good enough time to uh, get a good dissolving right off. So I'll add them to this small beaker here and I'll add in the hydrochloric acid and be back in a moment. Okay so you can see there's a generous amount of bubbling occurring and this is as it dissolves into solution any of the soluble material in the hydrochloric acid. So I'm just gonna let that sit there um, probably up on my shelf for about half a week to a week and um, then we'll see what we get. Um, so just leave this and I'll meet you back in a bit. Okay, so it's been about a week and you can see that the hydrochloric acid is starting to get dirty. That's because it's dissolving other things. It has settled out though, and uh, so that all the whatever is dissolved in it is on the bottom where all, um, all the monolithic ceramic capacitors are. So right now we mainly have nickel to chloride in solution, although it is obviously dissolving some other things. Now, since there's no more bubbling occurring, we can safely assume that all the soluble material has been practically dissolved. So, what we're simply going to do is decant off um, most of the mixture. So we're left with our palladium uh, and with some silver in it. So, I'm going to wash this super well. So I'm going to put it in a coffee filter and just rinse it over and over and over and over. Now it's very important to get all the hydrochloric acid off because after we're going to be putting in some nitric acid. Now we made some nitric acid in a previous video and we just need some weak nitric acid. Um, so you don't have to concentrate what we made previously. And this will dissolve off any of the silver or anything because we don't want silver in our final product. So I'll be back once I've dissolved this in some nitric acid. Okay, so here's the one solution that we originally decanted off. And I do have some nitric acid right here. And if you watch carefully, let me put in a drop. The camera doesn't pick it up very well, but there is a color change, which means there is a bit of palladium in here. Um, but that's not going to matter too, too much because it's just, well, there's no way of separating it from the nickel. However, the second solution I decanted off from the nitric acid 
definitely contains some palladium because um, as I'm dropping some hydrochloric acid into it, you can see that um, it definitely changes color. Now this is the color of palladium in solution. So I'm going to be saving this and um, then here is uh, our final product of all of those um, little um, monolithic ceramic capacitors. So I'm going to fill this with about uh, probably about three-eighths of the way full with um, hydrochloric acid then we're going to be dropping in some nitric acid. So um, I'll be back in a moment and I'll show you all the processes that we're going to be using to get out the palladium from this. Okay, so I added a bunch of nitric acid to this one and uh, probably just a couple of uh, pipettes full of it and you can see it's dissolved quite nicely and you have this deep red color. This is definitely palladium nitrate or no, uh, palladium chloride I believe which is in solution here. So we're going to filter this one off and keep it separate because this contains silver metal and we do th when we do the displacement reaction we're going to get um, an impure substance here. But this one is the pure palladium. Now you can see it's still dissolving and it's actually getting quite hot. It's actually dissolving the palladium out of those capacitors there. So we're going to leave this for a bit to darken up and uh, get all the palladium out of those capacitors. And then finally this one. It's kind of still hard to see but you can see it's a bit more of a brown color there. You can see that. Um, there's definitely palladium in this solution. Um, I added quite a bit. Um, but this also contains nickel. Now I'm not sure if the zinc that we will be using in this process will displace off the nickel, but if it does displace the nickel, then we'll get a nickel palladium impurity. So anyhow, this is going to be pure. This will be impure with silver and impure with nickel. So I'm going to filter all these off through a coffee filter so that there's no little particles, and then I'll meet you back. Just give me a moment. Okay, so I have our solutions. You can see the one that was dissolving has turned quite dark now, so you can see a lot did dissolve. But I'm still going to leave it to make sure that everything from those capacitors did indeed dissolve. I don't know if you can see, there's still teeny bubbles that are rising. The camera doesn't pick it up very well, but I can see it and faintly hear it. So here's our silver palladium one, and then here's our nickel palladium solution. So I'm going to be displacing this with some zinc. Now this is from this big zinc roll to you buy at most hardware stores and stuff. Um, if you can't find zinc, aluminum will also work. But aluminum is more reactive than zinc and might displace out some other metals that might be dissolved into solution that we don't want to displace out. So for this demonstration, I'm using zinc. Now, do be sure to filter your solutions before you do do this because what we're going to be doing is after we precipitate out some palladium, we're going to filter it off again to filter off the palladium particles. And if there is any other particles in, it will um, compromise our purity at the end. Although, since I'm doing these two right now, it won't matter because they're already going to be impure. But tomorrow I will show you um, the displacement of this one. So we're simply going to drop in our things, and I'll meet you back when something happens. You can see this one's quite, um, this one was filled with hydrochloric acid, so it's definitely fizzing. Um, and this one's just kind of, I don't know, we'll see what happens. So I'll be back in a bit. Okay, so here's our pure solution, and I just did this a moment ago, but... If you dip it in, you can see a very nice displacement. So it is the next day, and I am filtering off this other solution, and you can see it contains a whole lot of palladium, because it's all displacing off. Now, it doesn't look shiny, because it's in very fine particles on the zinc strip. But once this is done filtering, I'm going to dro drop in the zinc strip and leave it, and it'll dissolve, and the palladium will fall off. So I'll be back when all three mixtures are done. The other two are done, but I just won't show them till this one's also done. So we'll be back in a moment. Okay, so this palladium solution is done filtering, and this is the pure palladium here. So this one is all pure powder there, and um, it looks like it's a lot, but it's actually not a huge amount, just because um, it's finely distributed across the filter, and because it's in such a fine form. So um, it takes up a lot of surface area. You could melt that into a really teeny bead if you'd like. Now, these other two are not quite done filtering, and they're taking quite a while. But I devised a process to get the palladium out of these also. I thought that if there is metal impurities in here, which we precipitated out, if we just stick them in some more nitric acid, it should uh, eat away everything except for the palladium. That one will get palladium that way. But I'm not going to put that in nitric acid because that's fairly pure palladium and I don't want to ruin it. So I'm going to let those filter off, um, rinse them super well, and then we'll stick them in some hydro uh, sorry, nitric acid, some more nitric acid. And I'll be back once I've dissolved off all impurities and filtered it off. 
Okay, so I understand how long you guys have been waiting for um, this Palladium video, and I really do appreciate um, how long you ha have been waiting because this extraction process has taken a lot longer than I thought. But here is our final yield of Palladium powder, so you can see it down there. Now, because this is so fine, it wouldn't make a very large bead if I was to melt it, but um, that is clearly Palladium there. And um, so all I did was uh, take the rest of those, and the stuff that was pure I kept, and the other two I really tried to get the Palladium mode of that, and that's what took me so long, but I couldn't successfully do it. I still have the two solutions, and I'll probably end up saving them, um, and try to do it in the future, but honestly, it, I was having a really difficult time extracting the Palladium from that for some reason. So I just used the stuff that was the pure Palladium, which is currently what I have here after I scraped off that filter. So, um... And yeah, that's why it took me so long, and uh, finally I finished the Palladium video, and then here's the Palladium. So hopefully you can get your own Palladium. And another source of Palladium, which I might be investigating in the future, is catalytic converters. And I recently found there's a car dump that is just down our street. Um, it's not really a car dump, but it just has this really old car there, uh, probably from like the 80s. And um, it actually has a catalytic converter, which is excellent, and it's flipped over upside down. So it's pretty much stuck in there, so I'm not going to be able to get that out, but I'm going to try to dissolve it with some hydrochloric acid and try to get the stuff out of there. There is palladium inside, so long story short, I'm going to be trying to extract palladium and platinum and perhaps a bit of rhodium from that. So look for that in an upcoming video, and uh, hopefully you can get yourself some palladium. Anyhow, I'll see you later. Oh wait, bye.